Hello, welcome to Never Unwrapping. This time, it's The Beatles, otherwise known as The White Album. This is the deluxe anniversary edition with the six CDs in it. New remixes by Giles Martin, obviously his son. And this was my Christmas present to myself. I bought myself this and, and one more thing, which I'll do another unboxing. Uh, what can you say? Not only have they cleaned up the originals, that would be interesting in itself because the Sgt Pepper one was really, really good. What well, they've done with the bass there, they brought it up, it's, it's fantastic. So if it's as good as the Sgt Pepper one, I think I won't be playing my old ones, I'll be playing this, these versions. But it's got this, which is also on the 3 edition, which is the Escher demos, which is recorded around the time and I think they're all acoustic ones, I've n and that, I've never heard that. Plus, we've got, on this version, we've got outtakes, sessions, all sorts of stuff going on here. Plus, we've got a Blu-ray, PCM Stereo, DTS, HD Master Audio 5.1, Dolby True HD 5.1, and Mono. So, you've got every choice you could possibly want, haven't you, on this? You may wish to pause. Personally, I could have done without the book, and I've already just had the six CDs in the little box. But, you know, I might change my mind. I can just see the Beatles is stamped there, just like it was on the original album. Of course, it was just called the Beatles, but it's more affectionately known as the White Album. And these were the pictures that you got inside the album, as far as I remember. So, let's see. Yeah, Obradi Obrada is probably one of my very, very first memories, because I was born in 66, and about at the age of three, I started having memories. And one of those memories is hearing Oba Di Oba Da. And at the time, I had no idea who it was, and I didn't know who it was for years. And I didn't buy this one straight away, because uh, I used to go around to one of my mum's friend's house, and she was really into the Beatles in the 60s. She had all the Beatles albums, she had some unusual recordings and she had all of the fan magazines as well. And I ended up playing the earlier stuff, like with the Beatles. I think I went up to Sgt Pepper. I don't think she had this one, actually. That's probably why I didn't at the time. So I came onto this one a bit later on in my life. And when I heard Obla Di Obla Da, I, I didn't know it was by the Beatles. Mind you, I'm going back a few years, I was about... Oh, I don't know. I was maybe a teenager something like that, and I heard it again, and I hadn't heard it since I was about three years old. Well, that memory was in my mind, and I was like, oh my goodness. And it, it, it took me back to a memories of my first memories of being on this planet, and uh, it doesn't do it as much now, but when I hear it, it's still sort of, I get a little bit of a shudder of thinking about when I, when I was just born, really, and I had any memories. So it, this has sort of a special place for me, this, this album. Of course, we've got the infamous as well with Charles Manson and Helter Skelter. You all know about that. There's some great tracks on here. I mean, you know, you go from like a full on rock of back in the USSR to uh, the beautiful Blackbird, which is so simple, just a few notes on an acoustic guitar with the Blackbird in the background. It's wonderful, but it's such a contrasting album. There's so much going on in this one. But I guess I don't need to say much, do I? I mean, it's the Beatles, for goodness sake. If you're buying this, I would imagine that you already know all this. So, it has got a sort of printed rigid plastic or semi-rigid plastic cover over it. Right then. But the Beatles embossment and the number that's on the actual thing. In fact, I've got a number on my double CD that I bought when they first came out, the original CD. So let's see how it's presented then. Ah! <laughs> oh, it had to be, didn't it? It just had to be. Of course it had to be. Fantastic. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. CD1 and the Beatles is still, oh, and it's embossed. So it's still embossed. Fantastic. 
I don't particularly like these though. I always try and pinch it slightly to get your CD out because these scratch your CDs. So I think I might... See it's stuck now and I'm having to pinch the end. Well luckily the tracks don't start but it's, it's not good is it getting CDs in and out like this. So I might be on the lookout. So I bought some SHM CDs and they had little tiny like the Nagoya wrappers you get for albums that are actually in a circle and, and straight at the top, a bit like the Open University sort of shape. And they would fit in here, so I'm going to have to have a look for some uh, proper protection for these. Anyway, so there we go, so there's the first one. And I'm imagining the second one will have the uh, half apple, hopefully. I love the packaging, that is... It's funny, you know, less is more, isn't it? That, that, I didn't expect that, but it's absolutely how it should be. Oh dear, this is awkward. This is awkward. Okay. Once again, there's the embossed beetles there. Yeah, you can see it there, there we go. Yep, no. It's quite tight. It's a shame they just couldn't make them a little bit... If they made these a little bit wider, then you'd have a better chance of sliding in and out. Anyway, I'll be ripping all of these straight away, but I always prefer playing the CDs. I don't know about you. Um, I'll put a link, actually, up to my CD transport. It also shows you my hi-fi a bit later on. And um, I still think that CD sounds better than ripping it and playing it. I use lossless flack as my uh, default sort of rip. But I've tried WAV, and strangely that sounds different to the CD, which it shouldn't do. And um, sometimes, though, a WAV burnt disc sounds better than the original disc. Because I gather it's burnt straight through, so there's um, definite ons and offs. Rather than with these, they're dimpled and and on, dimple on, dimple on, rather than a hole. So sometimes the CD-ROMs, if you make a CD-ROM as a WAV, i.e. the same, can sound better than the original disc. It was certainly true of Tron, in the newer version of Tron that I did, that CD-ROM sounds better than the original. Right, that is fantastic. So there's the first two CDs, which is the album, the, the double album, and the Blu-ray to go with it. Oh God, is it gonna be an entire album with just white pages? <laughs> That's uh, quite a thick, quite a thick page there. So it's a nice, nice bit of protection. Oh, wouldn't it be fun if I just went through it and it was all just white pages all the way through? Oh, right. I thought it was then for a second. So let's see. God, these are, oh, no, hang on, that's, that's more than one, I think. These pages are so thick that I'm thinking it's two pages. God, it's really thick, really thick. Is that two there? Well, it looks like it's two. Because this is thicker than the, uh, think so it's it's thick enough to be too too stuck together and it nearly looks like two and it's thicker than the other pages anyway let's just carry on for now move it down here a bit let's just show you that a bit closer you may wish to pause Quite a heavy book. I mean, it's certainly, uh, God, this is really catching me out. It's so thick, I'm convinced it's too. Oh, it is. It is too stuck together. Okay. It's quite minimalist, as you would expect. Oh, 
There's a nice picture there. You may wish to pause. Right, some of these are separate. Oh, that's a nice one. I love the pictures with the old mixing gear. With the big faders they go over, not the, not the short or long throw faders we have now. It's lovely. Oh, these are this is a real quality, um, real thick paper. So it's really caught me out. It's like, I keep thinking it's two pages it's that thick. So this will last. It's got a lovely new smell coming off of it at the moment. You can smell the printing ink. So these weren't in the original. So we're very familiar with the uh, first pictures that you get actually inside the White Album, as far as I remember. Well, they, they were separate portraits, weren't they? You could put on your wall or what have you. Ah, okay. Sergeant Pepper. Surprising now. You may wish to pause. And there we go, some colour. <laughs> These, well, certainly those two look more like Magical Mystery Tour to me. Those colours. Wonder if we find a picture of uh, Yoko Ono in here. From what I can gather, although the press said at the time, you may wish to pause, that um, she was very disruptive. After seeing that John Lennon Imagine documentary over the uh, Christmas break, I don't think that's the case at all. I just don't think they liked her. It was a foreigner and they just didn't like her. From what I gather from watching her, especially in the Imagine, she had some input just occasionally saying, I don't think that sounds right. But most of the time she sat behind John just doodling away, doing some art pieces and things and doesn't come across as the uh, sort of person that would um, disrupt anything. So uh, I think she's been portrayed badly. And I, I, I don't think she... Uh, probably had the influence on this White Album that split them up. I think it was uh, Lennon and McCartney would just uh, had enough of each other for a while. Alright, you may wish to pause. Hang on, let me get that. There we go. Okay. Right, so there's all sorts of pictures here, so they're not just from the White Album. I think there's a bit of history going on here. Anyway, certainly some uh, a lot of reading material to go through. Some lovely pictures. I can't help thinking of Ringo when he dropped his camera in the uh, water in the Hard Day's Night when I, when I see him near to water now. That was a really nice touch in that film. You may wish to pause. Oh my, okay. Back in the USSR, writing out honey pie. Wow, so actually uh, the original scribblings as such of the lyrics. So now we're getting to it now. That's lovely, I, I love this sort of stuff. I also like seeing the boxes with the tape and any notes that on the tape and what speed and what have you. You may wish to pause. If I'm going to stop saying you may wish to pause because I think you're gathering I do this in case anyone wants to actually read it all and won't actually own this so you can still um, benefit from any of the information that's on it. I hope that doesn't annoy people when I'm doing my unwrapping or unboxings. Usually I, if it's this sort of longer book I don't normally go through every detail. I don't know if I'll do the whole book but I'll certainly uh, give you a good taste of it, unless I get comments saying I'd rather just see you open it up and flick for it quickly.
but you know you can always uh, forward through each little bit there. Wow, this is. I mean, I, oh, by the way, I bought this for a hundred pounds, ninety nine, I think it was. It had come down on Amazon, and that's what sort of clinched it. I thought I haven't really bought myself anything for Christmas, so I uh, I opted to buy this, and I bought myself another synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact I bought the synthesizer in November but I haven't opened it I'm saving it for Christmas which is just gone and I still haven't done the video so it's still next to me uh, waiting to be taken out of its box so what's your favourite on the White Album? so was John still living in the outskirts of London, that beautiful house where he filmed Imagine. So I think he came in for rallies, didn't he? Into London, definitely. Peace movements. I guess he must have been. If he did, I reckon he probably just bought it then. So he stayed there for quite a few years, didn't they? This is why I love this old this old gear, just seeing because they really were groundbreaking. They, they would get a new piece of equipment into Abbey Road and uh, the man in the white coat would say to John Lennon, right, this is how you do it. You get this here, you put this here. And he says, what happens if we turn it all up to number 10? What happens then? You can imagine the faces, can't you? But I guess after a while. I wonder how the Beatles were, if they were accepted by all these sort of white-coated boffins that, you know, had to operate all the compressors and what have you. And say, no, 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 you must do it like this. No. Crank it all out, let's see what happens. A bit like buying a car, really. You'd test the brakes, you'd test the corners, wouldn't you? Before you did anything. Same with all this gear. Max it out, see how loud it can go. Especially when you're recording to tape. I think some of the best compression for drums is when you saturate a tape and, and it becomes a compressor. I love that sound. I used to do that, I used to use that a lot when I had a Tascam uh, 238 8 track. I used to love going right into the red and saturating that tape to hold as much as it can. So you can mess around with it, so you can go into distortion and come just off distortion and get some lovely effects like that. And they were messing around doing all this sort of stuff. Really before there were any sort of effects available, other than maybe a spring reverb and a... And was there even a tape echo in 1969? It was more of a 70s, like a space echo, wasn't it? Anyway, they had tape recorders so they could make echoes, for sure. That's a nice moody picture, isn't it? It's lovely, that. Sort of high contrast. Love the way the light's falling on Ringo there. That's really nice. And someone's taking the picture. Yeah, let's have some nice pictures. There's plenty of room in this book for lots of pictures. I mean, I don't know about you, but I tend not to read too much these days. I'd, I'd much rather sit down, listen to the White Album, and just focus in on a few pictures, especially if you know what they're doing. Because here it says Martha, my dear, and here it says good night. It's really nice to focus in on a picture when you actually know the song that's being recorded at that time. There's a little moment in time frozen there. And I prefer that. Ah, so there's some sort of running order. Oh, this is great. This is really, really good. There's all sorts in here, isn't there? I'm glad I went for this now. So I was, I was thinking, oh, paper's changed. This is actually a... No, it's not. It's not a ring binder. It feels... Yeah, that's different paper there. That's This is sort of a glossy sort of paper and it's now gone to a a matte paper just to make this look as authentic as possible. That's, an, that's unusual, isn't it? In, to get different paper in one book. It feels different as well. Oh, this is fantastic. 
So we'll do a dimension there. Oh, it's the words. Writing on envelopes that ideas just coming. I mean, they wrote the, the song Hard Day's Night overnight, didn't they? They, they just said, you know, we need a, a title track for this uh, film. By the morning they had that, so they must have been prolific and very fast, sometimes at making music. Right, I'm not going to hold these up, I'm going to keep the camera like this now. Let's just uh, zoom in as much as I can. Get that out of the way now. Get that, I think that would do, that's near enough isn't it? That's really caught me out there, having different paper in the same book. He had a thing about, not Revolution, but Revolution 9, he had a thing about the number 9. And I think he was actually shot on the 9th, well it would have been the 9th in the UK, but I think it was the 10th in New York when uh, John was shot. So he always had a, a funny relationship about the number 9. He's even, even the eyes are in the 9s here, if that's his handwriting. Savoy Truffle. So it's all different scraps of paper, but the feel is great. It's it's like a much more porous, less glossy, more, well, it's a matte. It's a matte finish now. Whereas the uh, photos were on this uh, glossy, really, th it's all really thick. It's very, very good quality. So uh, there's no corners being cut with this book. This isn't just an add-on with a few pictures. This is proper job. Quite like Susie and the Banshees, dear Prudence. Their version of it is very good. Bungalow Bill's an odd one, isn't it? All these people in the background. Hey, up! Oh, my guitar gently weeps. Lovely song. There's some lovely guitar solos, aren't there? I don't know if you've ever seen the bootleg Beatles, but um, I missed it this year, so they weren't in Bristol, so the Colston Halls, or whatever we're going to call it in the future, it won't be the Colston Hall. This is the slave references now, it's going to be uh, done away with, but uh, it's closed for a year now, but usually at the end of the year at Christmas time, I go and see the bootleg Beatles. And the year before they did the tribute to uh, Sergeant Pepper, and this year they were doing the White Album, but I didn't see them, so it was earlier on, it was in Bath. They're worth, they're worth a, a go, because um, he played one with Guitar Gently Weeps, and the solo was absolutely spot on. Exactly the same. And they, they wear makeup and wigs, and they look like them, they go through all the different phases, unless you do a special, when they concentrate more on one. But they still go through like the early mop tops, and whatever, they're well worth a listen. If you ever see the bootleg Beatles, so they tour constantly around the country in your neighbourhood. Go and give them a, a listen. It's quite a nice family thing. Everyone gets up and sings uh, at the end. All you need is love. and It's a, it's a sort of a join-in atmosphere. People stood up dancing on occasions. They even get us up out of our seats. And it's well worth going to. Saying when, it, when it's back in Bristol, I'll be going again to the really, really sorry hole or whatever it's going to be called. I love these. That's one of my favourites, seeing the uh, tapes. There it is, actually, in there. Right, so we're back to the glossy paper again. I've just noticed there's no page numbers. God, I've got some moody lighting uh, shots going on here. Nice contrast, lovely. Beautiful camera work going on there. I'm a bit of an amateur photographer. Check me out, Mesmerland on Flickr. But um, on my Flickr account, there's all my photos because I use it for cloud storage. So the good and the bad are on there. So um, if you have a boring afternoon, you want to see a few photos, uh, please go and visit. There it is. Doom, doo doo doom, 
Do -do 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 it's a strange one, isn't it? I don't know, it really does affect me as I said, it's, a, it's an odd one for me. Yeah, it's a wonderful George Harrison uh, guitar solo, isn't there, on this one? Lovely song. It gets sort of various, doesn't it? You get some real, like, serious, fantastic, in-depth ones. And then you get some silly ones, like Bungalow Bill, for example, just moves we've gone past. You never know where it's going to take you next. If you haven't ever listened to the well before, it's a... Uh, it's a feast of, um... Separate people making separate music, but somehow coming together and still making all the music together. This, I think, might be a timesheet. A recording sheet. Happiness is a warm gun. Bang, bang, shoot, shoot. When I feel my finger. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Blackbird. Really quite simple. It's two notes on an acoustic guitar, but with that blackbird in the background, it's just wonderful. <laughs> you got to pick it, that's exactly what I'm talking about, you know. You drift off in some English country garden in, in the spring, and then suddenly you're confronted with, uh, <laughs> everyone loves little piggies. It's like a children's song. I've got to stop singing over all this stuff, you probably hate me for it. And he only found Gideon's Bible. Do it in a row, that's... Yeah. I'm surprised it... We didn't go on to, you know my name, look up my number and go off even weirder onto that. After that one. But, uh, I think, actually that's on an Extras album, I think, that, that track. I don't think... It, no, it didn't make it onto an album, did it, that one? Julia... Julia, la, la. Beautiful. I love the uh, emphasis on white in this. They're leaving plenty of space to reinforce that white cover. Blank. Nothing. Quite stark. It runs through, doesn't it? You know, rather than packing all the stuff, it, it, there's a starkness, or a reminder of, uh, it was just called The Beatles. Just stamped on the front. Actually, I don't know why they decided on that. Right, well, these look different from the ones that were in the original White Album. Well, obviously the same photo shoot. I don't know actually. Anyway, I hadn't seen them before. So that is a different photo shoot, I think. Nice happy ones there. Sorry about the computer noise in the background, but now I'm working in 4K, my stuff takes 
If I don't do anything to it at all, it takes four times longer than however long this video is just to render out. But if I do any corrections or any colour corrections or anything like that, sometimes I can have the computer on overnight just rendering out a quite short video. But I've just released some uh, fireworks ones for New Year and uh, they took about two and a half days to uh, render one of them, the multi-mirror one. And I've got a Ryzen 1800X, which I bought. I bought that damn chip for 500 quid and it came down in about half that price in just a few months. And I didn't think that was going to happen. That caught me out. Anyway, I'm digressing, talking about computers. But that's all that. If you can hear a fan noise in the background, sorry about that. But uh, rendering has to be done. Goodness knows how long this one takes. It's going to be quite a long a long video but at least you can uh, read all this if you wish to and I'm 4k god I hope all this is um, so my eyesight's not as good as it used to be I've got my glasses on here but I hope this is all in focus looks like it is so put it on auto focus it's a nice one it's an outdoor shot nice bouquet Quite a heavy book this, I mean I say it's substantial uh, thick paper, very best quality has been used here throughout. Now I'm thinking I'm glad I have got this. If I'd have known it was going to be this sort of quality I probably wouldn't have um, hesitated. But as I say the, re the reason I bought this version was for those extra three discs that we haven't seen yet, they're probably at the back. Yep, no Revolution 9 here. Number 9, number 9, number 9. See, that feels like two pages. Oh, it is. There we go. Well, that's a bit out of focus, that shot, but there we are. Mind you, I, 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 I like that myself sometimes. I quite often as a photographer find that I, I love a an out, out of focus shot and you may show it to other people and you think well it's out of focus what, what do you want that for I said yeah but the, there's a certain sort of atmosphere with this particular photo and I think this is probably I'm trying to see a, the focus point probably here I think so he's out of focus shallow depth of field so it's full frame which so is probably 35 millimeters isn't it it's going to be Yeah, grow on me. Savoy truffle. I should just do that one as well. Chuck that one in. Well, there's a lot of reading here. I probably will read it. Ah, there it is, Revolution 9. Well, we're over halfway. So already this has got the A plus award from me being very, very good quality indeed. It's a really heavy book. Got some more photos. Wonder what this is. It's just probably a remote Maybe timer for different tape decks. Hard to tell really.
Yeah, I'd be interested if you just want to uh, leave just a very short comment. What's your favourite track on the White Album? I think I'm going to go for... Oh, God, while my guitar gently weeps. Or Blackbird. Oh, it's so, it's so tough to... Uh, pick a favourite track on well, most Beatles albums actually because that's the thing about them you don't get like one or two hits on the album even all the tracks are good there is a few on here I don't like Hey Jude as well I think I've heard Hey Jude um, too much actually <laughs> it's nice to have a break from that one and come back because everyone, sort of, I can just hear everyone joining in with it. I don't know, you know what I mean. You can sort of, you can hear the whole world singing it when you listen to it. I think I'm going to go for Blackbird as my favourite track. Oh, I think I might surprise myself with that because there are some great tracks on here. Yeah, if you'd like to leave a comment below, I'd just be interested to see because this. It's probably one of the most variable albums they ever did. So I see there's some really strange tracks on it and some really serious ones, some proper rock ones. Yeah, so um, just leave a comment with what's your favourite track. I'd just be interested. So here we go to these demos. So I'm really looking forward to listening to this. I don't know if they've been out before, but I've certainly never heard them. And these other outtakes, outtakes I don't know if they have uh, been released before. The Mad Day Out Locations London. Okay. Is that where they recorded all these other tracks? Well, it's written here, isn't it? Can't read it now. There's a nice bit come back out a little bit now. Yes, yeah, so there's a nice full photo. That's nice. That's the lighting's great on that. In fact, it's hard to tell. If it's inside or outside, I think there's a lot of natural light there. So what it comes across as being, that's lovely. I really like that one. This looks like it's taken off of a film or video or something. It's quite grainy. High ISO, perhaps a 400 maybe ISO if it, if it was a camera. Or it might be a zoom in, possibly, post uh, negative. Let's pose for something. I wonder what that was for. Oh, it's all to do with these locations, isn't it? Here, the mad day out, right? So, I better not make any comments. I don't know what it's about yet, so I've read it. Obviously, they went to lots of locations to uh, do some photos. There's something about black and white photos. I find um, I'm on Guru Shots as well, Mesmoland. Mesmoland is my sort of name, it's my umbrella name. M E S M O L A N D, Mesmoland. Um, I've got a Guru Shots and um, I see photos from all over the world being put up for the uh, whatever competition is running, but I always, nearly always, favourite the black and whites more than the colour. There's just something about it. I think it's because we can perceive many, many shades of grey. Thousands or millions, I don't know how many. But we can only, with our cones and rods in our eyes, decode some colours. So um, maybe that's something to do with it. Maybe you see more in a black and white. You certainly get more atmosphere. There is the occasional one that, you know, is colour that catches me out. But rule of thumb... Wow, did they really have to, uh... Well, I suppose someone had to think of it in the first time. That's prototype, it says here. God, it's pretty 
heaviness. Getting a workout just lifting it up to the camera. Don't know if that will be able to see that or not. Maybe. I'll give you that hole there in its entirety. There we go. Ah. I guess they had a few ideas about how it was going to look. <laughs> they definitely decided early on though it was going to be very, very plain, didn't they? Collage there. Yeah. Wow, well, is that eight trap there? So it's on it's on reel to reel, so you could buy it on reel to reel cassette and eight track cassette by the look of things. I think that's that sort of saying what else is available because obviously most people in the day would have had it on vinyl. It's here. Oh, there it is being sent out. Twenty second, the eleventh, nineteen sixty Yeah, those are the more familiar photos. Two LPs, 30 great songs. Complete lyrics included. Giant full colour poster. Four colour photos. God, they spoke colour in American. Without a you. So I'm wondering if that's an American advert there, maybe. The second one's colour written with the U. There's all the tapes, all the master tapes. All right, so now we're obviously coming up to the end. We have what's basically the same as what was on the back on that slip plastic sleeve, what's on each disc. Thank you Fab Georgius from the boys, the men, the Beatles. 68. Right then, so what's going on here? Oh, what's this? Oh, that's not good. We have a poster, I think.
do, we have a poster. Unexpected, that was. In fact, it is a page that we've already seen. Let's go back as far as I can. There we go. It is a page we've already seen in there. And on the other side, we have the lyrics. That was an unexpected one, that was. I was just wondering what the hell that was, that, that this. Just make sure there's nothing else in there. You know, me being ever hopeful. Oh, there is. Oh, hey, yes, there is. There is more. I don't remember getting that with the original album. Maybe I did. That's the trouble, see, everything, I'm playing everything on CD. I'm going back to vinyl a little bit, actually. So these are on a more glossy finish. And uh, bigger than I remember them. I don't remember being that size in the uh, album. And definitely not on that sort of quality uh, card. Not that thick. All I need to do now is get them signed. Yeah, right. Good luck with that. So I'm getting quite surprised now. Just uh, every page that I was turning here was a surprise for me. It's like, what's next? So here we go. On to the last four. God, that was rammed in there, that one. Okay. So, these are the ones that you don't get with the first set. And actually, there is one more set available with exactly the same as this, but you get SHM CDs, which I've talked about before, super high material, and they are good SHM CDs, they're better than uh, the normal ones, but it was over another £100, I think it was £248 for this, exactly the same, but with SHM CDs, it wasn't worth that much. It might be a Japan only uh, thing. Everything else around me now looks complicated because I've, I've sort of got used to this white starkness, this white out that is this white album. Sessions. Oh, there is actually writing on the back there. It's very faint there. And once again, they are all embossed. It's actually raised, it's not printed on, it's an embossed Beatles logo there. So that's all the CDs, six CDs, and that's it, so the Blu-ray, it's been so long, ah oh, there we are, the Blu-ray's at the front. So the original album, the Blu-ray, and the extras at the back there. That is a very, very nice, very high quality 
well put together tribute. Lovely. That gets the thumbs up. Excellent. I'm glad I bought this version now. And if you bought the three version, you might want to put it on eBay and uh, go for this because I think for a hundred, well, it's hundred pounds. It's still a lot of money, but they haven't cut any corners with quality with this. Let me tell you that. It's very, very good quality. It's heavy, thick pages, well printed. So there we are. There it is, the Beatles, or the White Album, as it's more commonly known. I wonder how many of you actually stayed through all of that. <laughs> I shall leave it like this for the moment. So thanks for watching, and see you again next time.